Hello, everybody. Thank you all for attending. Well, my name is Diego Caballero. I'm working at Intel in the Vectorizer team. I'm one of the main developers of the B-Plan technology. And today I'm going to talk about the strategy that we have to introduce um, loop vectorization support in, the, in loop vectorizer using the VPLAN infrastructure. So first of all, um, this is the result of a collaborative work. We have a whole team working on VPLAN, and the credit of this effort should go to the whole team. I'm just the a speaker today. So the most important thing first, the disclaimers. <laughs> and now let's talk about the takeaways of this talk. So the first one is that auto loop vectorization is a big missing feature in loop vectorizer. Auto loop vectorization is not even a new technology. It's been there for a while, but however, we don't have it in loop vectorizer. And this is one of the problems that we are trying to address with uh, the VPLAN project. Uh, in addition to other limitations that we have also in loop vectorizer. So in this regard, the B-Plan project was outlined in 2016. Hideki Saito gave a talk about the high-level picture of this. And the B-Plan concept was introduced in Loop Vectorizer in early 2017. Um, Gil Rappaport and Ayal Thax were working on this. They also gave a couple of talks in the previous um, LLVM meetings. So I encourage you to have a look at them if you really want to know more about this. And for this particular problem, uh, today uh, we present five patch series that will incrementally bring support for outer loop vectorization in loop vectorizer. We will start supporting very, very simple cases and we will progressively add support for more sophisticated scenarios. And in order to implement this, uh, we want to introduce what we call the VPLAN native vectorization path which is uh, basically an alternative vectorization path in loop vectorizer that we will initially use only to uh, vectorize outer loop and where we will bring vplan up front in the vectorizer pipeline, which is something that we are not currently doing. This particular approach is interesting uh, because we won't be destabilizing the inner loop vectorizer, which is one of our major concerns at this point. So all the outer loop vectorization changes will be non-functional change for inner loop vectorization. And in addition, the main goal from the very beginning is to gradually converge towards a single vectorizer path that is able to vectorize inner and outer loops using VPLAN. And the next point, and I think the most important in my opinion, is that this uh, proposal is going to enable a lot of opportunities for the community to participate in the development and in the design of VPLAN, which is something that currently is not happening. Okay? So this is the agenda of the talk. I will, I will start talking about the VPLAN background. We'll continue with the proposal, the five part series that uh, will bring out loop vectorization support to LV, the implementation approach, the VPLAN native vectorization path, and some participation opportunities for the RVM uh, community to get involved. So let's just start with the B-Plan background. Um, what is B-Plan? So B-Plan is basically a new vectorization infrastructure that we want to introduce in loop vectorizer, and that is aimed at explicitly modeling and evaluating the cost of multiple vectorization scenarios, choosing the best one, and then materialize the vectorization decisions of that particular scenario on the input that are. So for example, imagine that we have a loop nest like this. So there are quite a few things that we could do regarding vectorization. We could vectorize the inner loop, we could vectorize the outer loop, we could vectorize both at the same time doing what we call nested vectorization, we could apply SLP, SLP aware loop vectorization, there are quite a few things. And this is what Bplan is going to um, evaluate and choose the best uh, approach, okay? And how does it work? So basically, Bplan is a model of the output vector IR for a particular vectorization scenario. So imagine that, for example, we have this. This is uh, the input LVM IR. We send this to Bplan, and at the beginning in Bplan, we are going to model an input. Uh, we are gonna have a model of the input IR. 
And the point, the idea is that we are gonna apply a sequence of B plan to B plan transformations that will turn the model of the input IR into the model of the vector uh, output IR, okay? And if this vectorization is the one with the best cost, is when we will materialize the vectorization decisions on the uh, input LLVM IR. The key point here, as you can see, is that the input IR remains intact until uh, we decide to execute um, the best plan, okay? So, and in order to do that, in order to be able to change uh, the model of the input IR, what we need is to have our own representation. So the representation basically consists of two major things, uh, a hierarchical CFG where we have BP basic blocks and regions here. You can see a very simple example with a, with a single loop. You can see, you can clearly identify the basic blocks. And we have two regions, one uh, enclosing the whole CFG and another one uh, representing a loop. We will have also other type of, of, regions, of regions. And the second important point is instruction level representation. We're gonna use what we call BP values and BP instructions, which is something similar to what we have in LVM IR, values and BP instructions. At the very beginning, we decided to introduce uh, recipes, but this was really a stepping stone towards the final representation, which is going to be, as I said, BP values and BP instructions. And as you can see, one of the design decisions is to make B plan uh, have, uh, this has the same look and feel as LVMIR. So that everybody familiar with LVMIR can come here and work with B plan without too much effort. So the B plan CFG uh, is similar to the LVM CFG, despite the regions that we are introducing. And BP values and BP instructions are also similar to values and instructions. We even have a BP builder, which is kind of equivalent to the IR builder, okay? And if you want to know more about what we've done so far, we have these three um, talks that we gave in previous uh, VM meetings. Uh, in the first one, Hideki uh, Saito outlined the whole project. Gil Rappaport uh, talked about the initial effort of introducing B-Plan in loop vectorizer, and Ayal Tax gave an, a, status, an a status update, and he also talked about BP instructions to model predication. So you can have a look at it. I really encourage you to have a look if you want to know more. There are a lot of technical details there. So now let's talk about the proposal, bring out a loop vectorization to B-Plan. So first of all, where is auto loop vectorization? Um, well, in a very, very simplified way, auto loop vectorization is when we are vectorizing a loop that has other loops inside, and the outer loop iterations are gonna be executed in a vector way. So imagine in this example that we execute the I loop with a BF equal four, uh, <coughs> and the first vector iteration would execute I, zero, one, two, three, within the same vector. And the key point is that each vector iteration will execute all the iterations of the nested loops at, at a time. So for, for this particular case, and this first vector iteration, these four lanes will execute all the iterations of the J loop, zero, one, two, three, four. And the same will happen for the next vector iteration. Okay, this is kind of a simplified explanation. When to apply outer loop vectorization? So there are many factors that could make outer loop vectorization uh, beneficial instead of vectorizing the inner loop. I'm gonna mention just uh, three of them. The first one is when the inner loop is not vectorizable, for example, because we have a dependency that prevents vectorization. Or for example, when, when it's inefficient. So if you have a look at the J loop here, we only have five iterations, so vectorization here is not gonna be very efficient. We may want to try to vectorize the outer loop. In addition, when we vectorize an outer loop, we may end up having a better memory access pattern. If you look at this memory access, if we vectorize the inner loop, we would have to generate um, a vector gather, which is a very expensive memory operation. 
However, if we vectorize the outer loop, we would generate an adjacent vector log, which is much more efficient. And finally, uh, if we vectorize the outer loop, we may end up covering a wider part of a hotspot. For example, here, as you can see, we will vectorize in also this uh, square root function and also the division. So the more instruction we vectorize, the more benefit we can get out of vectorization. This is not always like this, but in some cases it is. And why outer loop vectorization in LB? Well, outer loop vectorization, as I said, is a big missing feature. It's been supporting, it's been supported in GCC and ICC for years. And in addition, it's required to properly support some prominent models like OpenMP or OpenCL. So for example, if a user annotates an outer loop with a Pragma or MP SIMD, and we don't have support for outer loop vectorization, we won't be able to do anything, okay? Also, our long-term term goal is to introduce what we call multidimensional vectorization, where we should be able to vectorize several loops at the same time, the inner loop, the outer loop, and also considering SLP trees, something pretty advanced. And we really think that uh, having outer loop vectorization is a good step in stone. Knowing all the requirements of outer loop vectorization early will help us uh, have a better design in B plan. If we spend, I don't know, five years only working on inner loops, it may happen that the design is not suitable for outer loops or for something more complicated. And this is the proposal, pretty simple. So we want to introduce incremental support for explicit outer loop vectorization using V plan. Explicit outer loop vectorization is going to be our starting point. And basically means that in order to uh, enable the vectorization of an outer loop, the user at the beginning will have to introduce a pragma that tells the compiler that the vectorization of this loop is legal. And, and this pragma will instruct the compiler to vectorize this outer loop. Here we have an example. We can annotate the outer loop with a pragma on PCMD. We are also enabling the pragma clan loop vectorize enabled for this. And this explicit vectorization approach is interesting at the beginning because it won't change the current behavior of the inner loop auto vectorizer. We won't try to automatically vectorize outer loops at this point. So we will be preserving um, the current behavior. Of course, we're gonna use uh, vplan. We want to bring vplan up front in the vectorizer pipeline, something that currently is not happening. And we want to implement all the transformations needed for outer loop vectorization as a B-plan to B-plan transformation of the model of the input IR without, of course, modifying the input IR. And this is very important. As you will see later, uh, in order to vectorize some outer loops, you really need to modify the outer loop before even considering if uh, the vectorization of that loop is beneficial. And this is going to be also incremental. We propose five path series with very specific goals. We will start supporting very, very limited uh, scenarios, very, very limited outer loops, and we will progressively extend the support for more outer loops. This is a summary of the path series. So in the path series number one, we will support trivial outer loops, um, sorry, with trivial, trivially uniform branches. I will talk about this later. In the second one, we will introduce, for diverge, introduce support for divergent branches. Number three, we will introduce the technology to detect more sophisticated uniform branches. Number four, outer loops with divergent inner loops. And number five, outer loops with uh, multi-exit inner loops. So let's have a look at the first one. As I said, we're going to support something very, very uh, simple. And the first condition is that all the branches in the outer loop must be trivially uniform. A branch is uniform when you are vectorizing uh, a code, when you can ensure that all the vector lengths are gonna take the same path of the branch, okay? And we are saying that this is going to be trivially detected at this point because we are not gonna use any sophisticated technology, something like divergence analysis we are just gonna check that the branch is loop nest invariant. So we will, we will be supporting something like the example that you can see here. In addition to this particular point, the loops must be very, very simple. 
They must have canonical IVs. They must have simple bottom test conditions, something like IV lower, uh, lower than a loop nesting variant. And the inner loops must also be uniform. When you are vectorizing an outer loop, an inner loop is uniform if all the vector lengths of the outer loop uh, will execute the same iterations. There won't be any divergence, okay? And also very important is that at this point, we won't have support in the cost model to determine the vectorization factor. So this vectorization factor will have to be also specified by the user with a, a, a pragma such as the Cindy Len or, or some flag or some other mechanism, okay? So the vectorization technology that we are going to introduce here is basically all the technology to build the hierarchical CFG and construct it up front in the vectorizer pipeline. Um, we are also introduced support to represent loops in the hierarchical CFG, such as the region that I mentioned before, and also loop analysis that, that's, that works on top of vplan. And finally, all the code generation changes to be able to generate code for outer loops and preserve the uniform control flow that we are detecting, okay? So this is the current status uh, of the implementation. We have these three patches. The first one was already committed and was extending the reducible CFG detection to outer loops. The second one is implementing the detection of all the supported outer loops that I mentioned before with all the constraints. And the, and the third one is introducing the technology to build the initial CFG uh, in vplan. Okay, so if you want to have a look at the code, I encourage you to look at the patches. Uh, all the feedback is, is appreciated. And now patch series number two, we're going to introduce, introduce support for trivially divergent branches. Basically, divergent is the opposite of uniform, so in this case, we cannot ensure that all the vector lanes within a vector are gonna take the same path of the branch. And it's gonna be trivial also because all the branches that are, are not loop nesting variant will be considered um, divergent, something such as the example that you can see here. But this divergent support only applies to non-loop branches, so loops still must be uniform at this point. And the technology that we are going to introduce here is a basic B-plan predication algorithm to be able to predicate the divergent branches, all the representation for predicates and, ma and masking, and also the code support for all of this. In patch series number three, we're going to introduce the technology to detect more sophisticated uniform branches, branches that are basically uh, not loop nest invariant, but they are still uniform, such as the one that uh, you can see here. This branch depends on the induction variable of the inner loop and is uniform with regard to the vectorization of the outer loop. And in order to detect these kind of things, we need a more sophisticated analysis, something like divergence analysis, that can give us this information. Regarding patch series number four, we are going to introduce support for outer loops with divergent inner loops, basically inner loops when uh, where all the vector lengths of the outer loop may not execute the same iterations, such as in this case. You can see that we have a triangular loop, and in the first vector iteration, assuming BF equal four, you can see how each lane will execute a different number of iterations of the inner loop. So we cannot vectorize a loop like this. In order to vectorize this, we are going to introduce a B-plan to B-plan transformation that will turn the loop uh, the divergent inner loop into uniform in, inner loop. We will be doing something like this. I don't have time to explain the details, but basically after this transformation, all the vector lanes exec uh, will execute uh, the same iterations of the inner loop, and those lanes that shouldn't be executing the original loop body will be masked out by this condition that we are introducing. And this is a very, very simple example. Uh, Inner loop, uh, divergent inner loops can get really, really complicated. If you have a look at Hideki's presentation, you will see very, very complicated stuff. 
Finally, the patch series number five, we will introduce support for outer loops with multi-exit inner loops, such as the one that we have here, where we have a break statement. Something very important is that the multiple exits must be in the inner loops, not in the outer loops that we are vectorizing, because if the, if the exit is in the outer loop, we will be talking about search loop vectorization, which is a completely different problem, and it's, it, it's much more complicated. And in a similar way, we will have to introduce for this a B plan to B plan transformation that will turn multi exit inner loops into single exit inner loop. Something like uh, what you can see here, where um, the break, uh, the early exit has been replaced with a flag that is keeping track of the iterations that are taking, are taking the early exit. And then we are using this flag to mask out uh, those lanes that are taking the exit so that they don't execute the original loop at it. So if you want to know more about the patch series, we have these two threads in the community where we gave a status update of what uh, we've done so far. This, was, this is from December 2017. And in this RFC proposal, you can see more information about all these uh, B, uh, B plan series and the approach. And now let's talk about the implementation approach, the B-plan native vectorization path. So first of all, let's talk about the requirements. So introducing auto loop vectorization, a major feature in loop vectorizer is not an easy task. Loop vectorizer is a production vectorizer that everybody is using. And our main concern is that we cannot destabilize the inner loop vectorization. So for that reason, uh, we really think that all the patches related to outer loop must be non-functional change for the inner loop vectorization, at least at the beginning. Another requirement is that, that we should follow an approach that allows us to do an incremental development that gives us some flexibility and that is also cost efficient. We don't want to do massive code replacement. The approach should also allow us to continue the refactoring and the porting effort that we are doing to move all the code in loop vectorizer to B-plan. And it should also allow us to develop new vectorization technology. Something that we think is not reasonable is that we have to spend, I don't know, five years porting the whole loop vectorizer to B-plan, and then at that point, we, we will be able to introduce new vectorization technology. We need to find a trade-off. And of course, we want to do this in a single code base. We don't want to implement a new vectorizer. We want to share, we want to reuse the code that is already in the vectorizer. And we want to uh, extend it uh, to, uh, uh, we want to port it to B-plan and extend it to support outer loops. So how are we going to do this? Well, we want to introduce um, what we call the B-plan native path, which is basically an alternative vectorization path that we, we will be initially using only for outer loops. We will even be enabling this vectorization path using a feature flag so that we don't end up using it um, accidentally. And the idea is like this. So this is the inner loop vectorizer. We detect that we are dealing with an outer loop and the flag is enabled. And then we will move to the B-plan uh, native path where we will be building B-plan up front and we will be implementing all the B-plan to B-plan transformations necessary to vectorize outer loops, okay? And from the very beginning, uh, the intention is to share code as much as possible uh, between both paths and progressively increase uh, this shared code until the final convergence. Because the final convergence is the main goal from the very beginning. We want, we want to incrementally converge towards a single B plan based vectorizer that is able to vectorize inner and outer loops. And we truly believe that keeping these both paths close enough will facilitate uh, the incremental convergence. We will be able to port piece by piece all the features that we currently have in the inner loop vectorizer path to V plan. This final convergence will happen when uh, basically when the B-plan native path is a super set of the, of the inner loop vectorization path. And at this particular point, we will be able to replace uh, the inner loop vectorizer path 
with the B-plan native path. So now advantages and disadvantages. Well, the main disadvantage and the most important is that we are introducing this alternative path for outer loop vectorization. Uh, we don't want to have two vectorization paths for a while in loop vectorizer, but we really think that this is going to bring us a lot of advantages. We will keep the inner loop vectorizer path stable. We will bring our B plan up front in the vectorizer pipeline, and this will enable the development of new vectorization technology, and also will enable opportunities for the community to participate in the design and in the development of B plan. And it will allow to incrementally port all the existing algorithms that we have in BPlan <laughs> to support uh, also outer loops. Okay? So now let me talk about the participation uh, opportunities. So the idea with this part series is to bring all the bases, all the basic infrastructure so that everybody can use it up front in the vectorizer pipeline. Uh, in this regard, for example, the patch series number one will introduce all the technology related to the hierarchical CFG and BIP instructions. And we will be able with that uh, to, be, to build new vectorization technology. In fact, here we have an example. Currently, we are collaborating with ARM. They are developing um, a proof of concept of SLP aware loop vectorization. You can get more information in this um, RFC. Uh, some, someone else could also help us remove all the constraints that we initially have in, uh, in, the, in the auto loops that we are uh, supporting. Regarding the patch series number two, predication, we know that region vectorizer implements uh, some advanced predication, so it would be great if we can work uh, with them to bring this technology also to be planned. And something similar happens with the path series number three um, regarding divergence analysis. They are also working on divergence analysis. I think that Simon Moll is giving a talk tomorrow about this. And we are already talking to them to see how we can bring this also uh, to be planned. <laughs> and regarding path series number four and five, uh, we are introducing some sophisticated B plan to B plan transformations that could be used as a model to follow for other B plan to B plan transformations. At this point, I think we will have the infrastructure to build, for example, search loop vectorization and more complicated stuff such as support for <coughs> loops with, with conditional as private and many more. Okay? And beyond um, the patch series, um, if someone is interested, uh, it could implement a support for auto vectorization of outer loops. As I said, we are initially introducing only support for explicit vectorization, so we would need to extend legality and the cost model for that. Um, Hideki Saito is also working on refactoring all the components of the loop vectorizer. And uh, this is a lot of work. It would be great if someone could also help us so that we can use uh, all these components in both vectorization paths and even beyond uh, the vectorizer. We are even moving things outside of the vectorizer. Um, we will also need help with the final convergence, porting all the existing features in the inner loop vectorizer to BPlan. Uh, we will need to compare um, how BPlan is with uh, respect to the inner loop uh, to see how far we are from uh, the convergence. In addition to the porting, extend the features to support outer loops. There are quite a few options that I think this uh, approach is bringing. And of course, code reviews, we really appreciate all the effort, all the time that you are putting uh, into this, into reviewing this code and providing uh, feedback. So thank you very much in this regard. And finally, the conclusions. So outer loop vectorization is a big missing feature in loop vectorizer. Uh, we are going to introduce this uh, patch series that will bring incremental support for outer loops and will uh, bring also all the infrastructure to, to build new vectorization technology. We think that the B-plan native vectorization path is a reasonable approach and will help us move quickly to the final convergence 
uh, to have a single B plan based vectorization path with support for inner, inner and outer loops. And the most important, I think, is all the possibilities that this approach is going to enable for the community to participate. Okay, so thank you very much. That's all on my side. If you have questions, We have about 10 minutes for questions, so get them going. Yep, last question. Did I run too much? <laughs> so uh, I think the, the, all the changes that Hidek is doing to refactor everything is, is going to help us merge the two vectorizers later. I just worry that uh, right now, because we're splitting things, we can test outer loop in one side, inner loop in the other side, and unless we can actually reuse these things, uh, we're going to have to duplicate the inner loop into the native vplan path and then test that. And I mean, I can see two ways that this could be done. One of them is just like copy and paste things. Uh, the other one was try to call, like to have hooks calling back or something. So which one do you think will be better for us to then do that analysis? Uh, I don't think we're going to replicate it because supporting outer loop vectorization is basically a superset of inner loop vectorization. So the approach that we are taking will, will, will be supporting also inner loops at some point. And uh, well, I mean, the, this graphic is not really illustrative enough. Um, the idea is that we will be able to reuse most of this code. For example, at this point, we are reusing uh, the legality code just by extending what we have to support outer loops. And the idea is that we will be narrow, narrowing also uh, this gap. So I don't think we will end up replicating code. Some, some of also, some of the problem is that we cannot port things uh, as they are currently, for example, in the inner loop vectorizer. In the cost modeling, for example, we are doing too much hand waving, and we, we don't want to just port that like this to B plan. We have to do the proper modeling, and we cannot um, implement the, ho the, the whole cost model at once. So we have to, we need to have like a scratch pad where we can progressively port things. That's which, the whole point. Yeah, which of means this. The, the, the first inner loop factorizer in the V plan will be worse than the current just because the heuristics will be probably not yes. as good as yeah that's the point yes okay. so when doing the analysis we have to be aware that we might have to take a hit yeah of a few percent just because and then later on optimize yeah yeah I agree and it should be it should be okay because no nobody should be using the B plan native path for example for production Nobody should come us and tell us, well, this is not working and this is working. Well, at some point it will be working, but the idea is that we can, we can follow like an incremental development. Otherwise, it's going to be very, very complicated. Next question. Uh, regarding the outer loop using a Pragma SIMD, what kind of benchmarks are you running for that? Well, this is just the, the starting point. We are just following this approach because we don't want to change the uh, behavior of the inner loop vectorizer initially. So basically, if you don't use the pragma, we won't be doing anything. This is exactly what we wanted at the beginning. Yeah, I understand, but you said GCC and ICC already support it, so you must be having some benchmarks which already show improvement for that, right? Um, I'm not sure, I think there, must be some OpenMP benchmarks, but basically this is coming for, from uh, clients' applications where they are annotating the outer loops with Pragma on PCMD. We have time. Any more questions? Feel free. Yeah, great. Uh, so when you're writing auto vectorizers, often the biggest thing that stops auto vectorization from happening is a list analysis. Uh, where it thinks that two pointers might point to the same thing, uh, do you, do you sort of casually wave that aside with your with your pragma and um, just get, let let the the vectorizer get on with it? 
Yeah, if I understood the question, well, the pragma is exactly what, the, what it's doing, right? It's telling the compiler, you don't have to worry about legality checks. You can just go ahead and vectorize it because the user is responsible for that. It's telling you, this loop is vectorized, it is legal. If it's not legal, it's my fault. If, if you end up generating something that is not correct. This is the whole purpose of, uh, of pragma and PCMB, for example. Thanks. Thank you. Any more questions? Okay, if not, thank the speakers again. Thank you.